Morning guys. Well it's about um, half past seven in the morning here yeah? and I'm about to head out to go and um, spend a couple of hours with um, Kate and Alan who own a, a, a very good butcher around the corner from me. Um, I've known them for a while now, very good friends of mine and I was, I was telling um, Alan the other day that I think it's it's a shame that, that no one really gets to spend time with butchers anymore and and just you know have a bit of a chat and, and talk about just meat in general. Um, this is a bit of a follow on from my video I did the other day with the um, baker. So today we're going to be spending time with, with um, Kate and Alan and um, we'll see what um, see what we can drum up and then uh, bring back and uh, make here at home. Right, so we're here with um, Alan from uh, Meet at Chancellor and um, I was just going to go through the, um, the basics of telling a good rump and I'll hand it over to Al, so please uh, go ahead. Hi guys, here we have a, a nice yielding uh, MSA whole rump. Now, to, to look at a nice whole rump to decide what's very nice in it is the, uh, the fat content. What a nice white fat cover. It's a light coloured meat. And as you can see, there's not a great deal of sinew there. We will trim that out as we go. Can you shot that? Yeah. Right. But as we start off, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a first slice off the rump. We'll go across the grain. And then um, we are also underneath here, as you can see, there's some sinew there and a little bit of sinew there. That's where it comes off the bone. So we'll actually trim that off. If we don't trim that off, that is very, very chewy. This is what we call our first cut. It's our first cut there. As you can see, there's still a little bit of sinew there. What we'll do, we'll just trim that out in a second. I'll take this undercut, undercut off. Once again, this is just very, very chewy as we go. So if we trim it off. Beautiful. There we go. Okay. As you can see now, we're ready to slice. So, you would like this sliced in 200 gram slices. There we go. As we go across the grain there. Now, what's the um, what's the difference between cutting across the grain and cutting with the grain, and what effect does that have on the quality of the meat? Well, if you cut across the grain, your your meat will be guaranteed tender. You cut the other way. Well, you can actually turn a good steak into make it very, very chewy. So what do you mean when you, when you talk about grain? Grain. As you can see here, you can probably see the grain as it runs. It runs a long ways. If we cut the other way, it'd be uh, across the grain, and therefore that upsets the grain and it won't cook tender. Okay. Okay. Also, while we're cutting this rump here, this has been aged for a little while, um, which is a better part of slicing rumps and things like that, and meat in just in general, to have aged meat, where sometimes now there is beef coming out which has been hot bone. Now, hot bone means it's just been slaughtered, it's coming along the train, and they actually bone it straight out. Therefore, you could find that your rump will be really sloppy and uneven to, to cut, makes it very hard to cut, and also very dark. Therefore, the, the blood hasn't um, been drained out of it as well, so it can have a real strong bloody flavour. Okay? So age rump is the best way to be. Oh, yeah. Right, so Alan, you've got um, two kinds of steak on the board here. So what exactly have we got? This here is just our whole rump that we've sliced up. It's a, a yearling MSA uh, Angus rump. And this here is a piece of Angus rump, which is the same rump, but it has been dried aged. It has been dry aged for 40 days in a special fridge that we've made up. Um, dry age is actually a, a, a way of making beef really, really tender. We, um, we actually stick it into a fridge. It's done on a certain temperature for all, for 40 days. Um, and we've actually taken the moisture out. So therefore, the meat doesn't actually go rotten or smelly. It just dry ages it. You can sit in the fridge there, the longer the better. But we recommend 21 to 40 days, and this is a 40 day um, rump steak. So by aging the meat for 40 days, what actually happens to the quality of the meat? What, what, what Does it make it more tender? Does it affect the flavour? What, what does it do? Well, that, what it actually does, or what we've found in our dry aging is, is actually the flavour is a stronger flavour. 
right? The tenderness, it's, that will be just like eating eye fillet. Now everybody knows eye fillet steak is actually beautiful, but we've actually changed the run steak to be eating quality off an eye fillet, just over the 40 days of sitting in, a, in a, its own refrigeration. Um, you do lose a lot, as in a whole run, for trimming. That's why it's so dear, but it's really worth it. After you trim the rump up, slice that up, and then cook that off, that will be absolutely beautiful to eat. Fantastic. Right, so we're just having a bit of a chat with um, Kate, Alan's wife from uh, Media Chancellor. And um, just, just a bit of a follow-on from that video we did with um, Dutchie, just talking a bit about how important it is to support local business. Um, at at Sabor, we, we really pride ourselves on supporting local, and um, just you know, it's, I think it's important that we, we really get get away from supporting the, the big supermarket chains and getting back to support the small local business because you know in the current economic climate, everyone's suffering, and you know everyone needs to needs to try and make a buck. And um, what are your thoughts? Well, it's really hard because I just believe that the internet has taken away a lot of local small business trade. We find people come in and check prices out and then go and order things over the internet. And that, that gives your staff, users staff up, which is money to the, the uh, small business, and they don't get anything back. Woolworths and Coles and all the big chains all have so much diversity. They've got the food, they've got the petrol, they've got the pumps, they've got the bottle loads, they've got all sorts of things that they, um, they can open up right beside you and you can't beat the prices. They buy it by the truckload. We buy it by a car. And it's just so hard. Unless we start supporting local business, we will have no jobs for the future because most of our retail trade employ unqualified staff to services, and that's where all the kids are going to get jobs that aren't qualified for anything else. Retail supports so many different families in so many different ways. You find when the retail starts to die off, jobs start going and the second income goes, and I think it's really important to start buying local, support the local, because unless you support the local, the local will be gone. Yeah, we'll just say, Al for a start, not like the shop, Al's um, fourth generation butcher. They opened one of the first butcher shops on the Sunshine Coast a hundred years ago, and that was in Palmwoods. So, you know, like, like this tradition has gone down from generation to generation, and this happens in a lot of small businesses, bakers, butchers, um, you've got mechanics, all those little guys that do the same thing, and they hand it down from father to son or even father to daughter. It doesn't make any, any difference to sexes now. But no, you'll lose all these trades. So there you go, guys. Take 10, 15 minutes out of your day when you do your shopping. Come to a local business. Support a local baker. Support a local butcher. They really need your help. And in the long run, they'll support you back. That's right. Yeah, that was good fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, so that was yesterday. Now, um, that, that rump that Al gave us, that fantastic rump he gave us, um, I brought that home yesterday morning. And I um, soaked that in a brine liquid. So for that, I used two liters of warm water and three liters of vinegar. And I haven't added anything else to that. Um, and I've just brined that down and that's been sitting overnight in my fridge. So that's um, ready to crust now. So we're gonna be doing um, bultong with that. For those of you who don't know, um, Bultong is a South African air-dried beef, um, similar to beef jerky I suppose, except beef jerky is smoked and obviously this is air-dried. Right, so starting off, I've got one cup of coarse salt, a third of a cup of brown sugar, this should do about five kilos of meat by the way, which is about how much rump Al gave us. Now, I've got one tablespoon of um, crushed black pepper. New York cut pepper is fine as well. One tablespoon of whole peppercorns. One teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And 
and two tablespoons of coriander seed. That is a vital ingredient, the coriander seed. So then, just mix that all up. We take the, um, the rump that Alan sliced for us. Now we sliced it fairly thin, which is perfect because then obviously your beef is going to dry faster. And while it's still wet, just basically letting that uh, letting that mixture coat it. And then we'll set it down on the tray. As I'm taking it out the brine, I'm trying to get as much of that liquid off as possible. I don't want it to be too wet. I just want it to be moist enough so that this uh, spice rub will stick to it. So I've got this box that um, I've had specially made for the purpose and it's about, it's about um, one and a half meters long by um, half a meter wide and it's fully sealed there's no ways anything can get in it's got a um, fly screen on both ends so that you can get proper airflow as well there's a fan to push the air along there's uh, quite a strong um, bulb there to help dry out the meat and um, once that lid's closed, it's nothing can get in other than air through that um, through that slot over there. And keep in mind that the, the meat has been cured overnight, and it's fully salted. And I've just got some tin foil in the bottom over there, and some aluminium rods to hang it from. So that's it all set up, ready to go. And uh, now we'll just close it up. That's how it's done. Um, I really hope that someone out there makes some, makes their own. Um, please uh, post um, a comment if you do, or even give me a response video, that would be great. Uh, I'm just keen to hear what everyone else um, thinks out there. Um, yeah, furthermore, I just want to say that um, I was really touched by um, what Katie had to say yesterday. Um, it was heartfelt. and. I realize there's a lot of small businesses there and a lot of um, butchers and bakers that are struggling and um, I really want everyone to go out there and just please support local. It means a lot to me. Thanks.